Hey, hi, in this video, I will show you how to deploy multi trigger type Azure function app with using GitHub Action CI CD. So, here we will have our source code sitting on GitHub repository. In this video, I will show you how to write the GitHub Action workflow uh, which will do a Azure function app deployment, and that Azure function app is hosting multi trigger type Azure functions. So, here we will see now how to enable the uh, Azure function app developers to write the source code in a certain folder structure and the file structure right and then how he can zip that particular uh, function app source code and deploy onto the you know the azure function app with using the github actions and then we see that you know how does those functions say for example q trigger um, then the uh, http trigger or the schedule trigger functions how does it appears on the uh, on the azure function app so in this video i will show you an example azure function app of, of linux type and then we see you know we try to write that azure function up in the python runtime okay so with that let me take you to the my azure subscription where i can show you the setup so this is my azure subscriptions where i have a you know i have the uh, subscription this is my azure um, you know cloud quick lab subscriptions where i have the uh, you know the resource group with, that is github actions demo so in this resource group if you see that you know i have the uh, prerequisite infrastructure that is um, uh, that is you know the function app and the and the app service plan uh, and the storage account plus you know the app inside now in this uh, you know in this function app which is basically operating system type of linux how we can deploy the you know different trigger type i was focusing more on different data, you know different uh, trigger type one is of type http q and, and timer so basically these are three different triggers in the sense you know somebody will trigger it right so here http trigger means you know this function is accessible over the http request like you know uh, port number 443 or or basically port number you know basic uh, over the port number 443 and then the queue trigger queue trigger is a function which is basically listens to the queue and gets triggered in the sense here it can be triggered by a various queues like azure storage queue or service bus queue and then you have a timer trigger which is basically scheduled you know the function that gets triggered on periodically basis Okay, so now this is very unique a uh, function app which has a different uh, you know function triggers. Now we see that you know, how we can build that on the on the you know, on the source code, right? So now I will take you to the my um, GitHub uh, you know the repo. So here is the my GitHub repo. Uh, basically, this is my uh, if you see here, this is my repository called uh, Azure Service Serverless. Okay, so in this uh, you know in this repository, I have already demoed you how to zip uh, deploy a function. Okay, uh, on the Azure Function app. Now this is a continuation part of that like how you can do a zip deployment of multi trigger type functions on a single function app now you see that here is a here is a basically uh, is, is what i'm going to show you here now uh, so if i expand it basically so we have created a folder called multi trigger type functions okay and that contains a, a subfolders called http trigger function so http trigger func is a folder basically it contains the source code of the function that is getting triggered by the HTTP trigger. Then we have a function called queue trigger func, which is basically gets triggered by the queue. Then we have a scheduled func, which is basically triggers on the scheduled basis. It's a scheduled function. Now underneath that we have a host.json, requirement.json, and I know scheduled functions that are basically shared functions that we have file. So altogether, this particular folder that is initiated from multi-trigger type functions deploy is a pack of multi-trigger type. Uh, you know the deployment uh, uh, folder you need to zip, zip this and try to deploy on a azure function app you're going to see those three different you know, functions coming up now with that you know what i did is i have cloned this repository on my vs code and i'm going to walk you through the special content of those you know files underneath those folder structure now you know that here i was you know talking that you know this folder it contains the source code of http trigger function now remember that what is the name that you give here it becomes a name of your function so give the name properly as per your conventions okay underneath this you know we have a source code that is pertaining to the http trigger so this is very simple file you can have a look at that it basically you know receives the uh, request from the http uh, processes the request and then sends the response something like this and if i go to the you know the function.json file okay so the main uh, you know the basically segregator of this different trigger type of the function is basically driven by what do you keep in the function.json in the function.json you know you define like you know, hey this function is getting triggered by this type 
and that is where you know bifurcation happens in the here that is hype equal to trigger http trigger which means that you know you are telling that azure function app this function going to be triggered by the http okay that is the differentiation that you do uh, per folder while folder name itself is a function name okay this is well known to this one so it defines the inbound definitions and the outbound definitions likewise if you go for the queue trigger which is basically another type of trigger uh, function trigger it also has the init.pi function which is basically default python file which gets triggered i uh, you know whenever this function gets called so remember that as i said earlier what is the folder name that you do that becomes a name of the function so it contains you know if you see here it is it receives the queue message decodes the queue message and processes those messages right so likewise in the function.json it contains the definition like how this function gets triggered it has the type equal to queue trigger that is what it differentiates that is what this function gets different you know uh, that is how this function gets recognized hey this function is getting triggered by a queue and here you specially mention which queue it is and what is the connection that is you know web job connection so all these are you know configuration that you need to maintain so that this function gets triggered by the queue it could be storage queue or it could be service bus queue okay so remember that i am just showing you the syntax of the you know of the of the functions of the different trigger while there is a other surrounding uh, you know the configuration that you need to maintain to make it end to end correct which you can look it into the another uh, you know, maybe uh, maybe going through the microsoft document or, or or from the internet while my job in this video is to help you to how to keep the folder structure and enable you to deploy that function into the function apps all right and then we go for another one that is scheduled function okay so in the scheduled function it again if you see here it is basically getting triggered by the timer request okay but you know generally the scheduled function are needed to do a, a a job periodically right it does not need to have any input generally right while you know it, it while the you know time becomes input in the sense when that particular time occurs you know it, it triggers basically you know it, you know that that run of that particular function gets started so likewise if you go to the function.json which defines it its trigger okay so that's where the timer trigger is the type here and you see the direction is in uh, and the timer name is my timer and this has been scheduled with using the uh, this particular cron expressions okay and then we if you see that you know this is how the a different trigger function folder has to be created underneath a root folder so this folder it's 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 of your choice you can give it any name and while underneath that subfolder that you give it carefully give it because that name will be used to name your function of respective trigger and then we go to the host.json so this is the host.json is a common file for the entire function app and uh, this configuration applies to the all functions within that function apps so okay so this is what you can follow the syntax and that's where we have the request.txt file so request.txt file is nothing but you know this txt file uh, contains the number of you know python so here my function uh, type is basically python so it it has the libraries you know that has supposed to be installed while making this function successfully running so basically it, it contains the requirements of the you know the, the python modules since my function uh, you know app is is python runtime now shared function okay so i know that there are shared functions that is common across all these trigger types of functions you know that you can keep it in this shared functions and that can be imported in this init file okay so that is where you can try to uh, import here which is basically a python thing that you can do it all right so now with this you know we are done with the source code walkthrough let's go and see our main important file that is i uh, know the azure funk deploy.pfi so this file will remain same as it is i was explained you on the previous video so only slight changes you know that is what i'm going to show you here so this is basically title we have a name called uh, azure function deploy.cicd file it gets dispatched in the sense it gets invoked manually it has a permission that is rewrite because i'm using the oidc connector to authenticate to my azure subscriptions and then here it has the you know the run on ubuntu latest it has the steps like check out the repository installing the python why because i want to um, you know i want to uh, uh, get the requirement that takes people in the sense i want to zip this particular folder right so that's where i need the python setup and i'm using the 3.11 python and then it has the installed module in the sense if you see here so this is basically a, a, a linux commands we are doing the cd to this particular folder uh, then we are running the python that is pip install upgrade pip uh, then we are doing a pip install target in the sense underneath this package library so we are creating these folder structure called package libraries these subfolders and then compiling the requirement.txt file which means that you know it will download all those packages that is defined in the requirement.txt file and gets kept in this packages 
and then you know so then what you are doing is you are actually zipping this in the sense this dot python file will get um, you know will get added underneath this multi uh, trigger type function deploy folder right and then you are doing a zip of combination of dot python packages plus all those ex you know existing uh, subfolder type including codes of JSON requirement and shared functions that gets zipped in a single file name called multi trigger type function all right and then this is where the normal oidc connection type which you can watch how to set up this with using the my another dedicated video which i have already shared in this my channel list and then we are doing a uh, checking the connections by, by running certain az commands that is account show and list groups and then this is the magic happening this is basically i am using the az cli commands to do a zip deployment this is basically idempotent um you know the 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 az command that you can keep running until you have a resource group and a function app with this name so make sure that you have a resource group with this your resource group name and the function app name right and then make sure that this is properly zipped until then you know this this function keeps running every time in sense you run this now you zipped a certain version later you want to do something you know that will happen keep you know keep on happening now what i do is you know as part of the demo i'm going to try to show you some i will just make some changes here right so uh, what we do is you know here we will add some say like uh, body hyphen i'm going to add some custom message here that is so that we will see some this message is 000, 000 okay all right now what i do is you know i'm going to do a uh, save this particular thing so okay and then we're going to commit this to the upstream branches right so i'm doing these the ci cd upstream uh, you know check out and check it and check out basically and then you know sync in this one what does that sync is basically you know you are pushing that change to the upstream branch and that is main branch okay then we're going to do a demo so this is the final part of the demo that is we're going to go to the actions and then we go to the uh, you know the workflow name called azure function deploy and then let's trigger the deployment i i will make sure that you know this deployment goes uh, successful and we see that code in the azure function apps especially underneath the http trigger okay so now I'm going to show you the live demo here. That is what uh, we're going to see, and this is purely live demo, so that you get the hands-on experiencing things. Okay. Now, um, so here we are, we are, we are actually seeing this uh, particular job getting executed, and this job contains a list of uh, things that is happening. If you see here, it's actually doing the, a lot of things here. If I can, uh, I can refresh it now. Uh, here you go. It has uh, done the uh, checking out of the code. Uh, then it has did the setup of the python it is now installing the required python modules okay so basically whatever the task that is defined in the github action workflow so that is what happens in a serial manner until there is no failure now here you go right so we have zipped it uh, we did a login uh, we it did the run az command then it is actually doing the build and deploy the azure which is basically core part of the of the workflow which is actually deploying it okay remember that you know you are doing a deployment of all the three functions in one shot so you know remember that you know so whenever you make a changes on a particular function make sure that it is needed while it will not impact the other functions so, so basically it's a compact thing you do a end to end testing now we have if you see here so the pipeline went green uh, which means that you know so the deployment went success now let me uh, go to the azure function apps so this is the azure function app and now let me try to refresh it remember that once the deployment goes green and when you go back to your azure function app and refresh it you should see the function in a green that is enabled enabled or at least you should see the name which means that you know the deployment has went successful if something is not appearing here the functions are not appearing something is wrong which you need to troubleshoot okay so if you require i can do a one more troubleshooting you know troubleshooting dedicated video on this uh, particular function app if you require please try to comment on this on, you know on this video now i i showed you we made some changes okay so now let's try to test our function which we deployed you know as part of this demo so we made some 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 you know cosmetic changes in the in the return messages let me show you if that is appearing here earlier it was not there so i did a changes and hopefully this is appearing here now here we go right so we have uh, we got that uh, basically you know that is 000 which i have appended purposefully now let me get the url and we try to invoke from the browser and then that's the final part of this demo so what we do is you know you can click on get um, you know the function url copy that and try to go to the browser again and try you know just do a control v or paste it and just trigger on that right if you are getting this response which means that you know the functions are working 
while other two functions you know i cannot show you here because it needs a queue so if i can open again so uh, the http trigger http trigger function can be shown because we are invoking the http request while queue trigger you know you need to have a dedicated storage queue so that it gets triggered similarly scheduled one right so the scheduled one was triggering uh, you know every 5 minutes you can always you know so it, it does, if you see here it does not gets the you know the get url right so you know that's what i wanted to show you here so um, i don't know basically here i showed you that you know how you can zip the three different uh, you know the how you can zip the three different um, trigger type of a functions and deploy those functions on a dedicated azure function apps all right so with that note you know i have shown you the things need to be shown in this video and the source code of this particular a demo will be shared in video description you can find it from there finally thank you very much for watching videos uh, a kind request is to subscribe my channel that would uh, really encourage me a lot with that note thank you thanks for attending the next video